야, 오케이. 어디서 시작할까요? <웃음> 오케이. From the first. Yeah. First of all, first. So, oh, hello, Blog Media. So, we are here today to have an interview with p o b a l e n p o b a l e n is a leading modular data infrastructure layer dedicated to solving long-term data availability and verifiability challenge in the AI era. Uh, it's great to meet you, Ganesh. Thank you for coming today. Hey, fantastic to be here. I love, uh, I love South Korea. I love the people. I love the food. And uh, yeah. thank you for this opportunity. Yeah. Could you introduce yourself and your company briefly? Absolutely. I'm Ganesh Swami. I'm one of the co-founders of Covalent. Uh, I'm a physicist by training. I used to work on cancer drugs. And then I uh, pivoted to data infrastructure uh, and then running Covalent for the last five years. Uh, so that's a little bit about uh, my background. Very passionate about data, data analysis, transparency, uh, property rights, and so on. And with uh, Covalent, we solve uh, two key problems. One is long-term data availability, which is access, decentralized access to transaction data. And the other problem is the verifiability uh, problem in AI. Because without a system like blockchains or Covalent, uh, you cannot really trust the AI models and uh, data that's coming out. But we'll get into that more uh, further yeah. down. But that's Covalent in a nutshell. For those of you who've taken chemistry, Covalent comes from Covalent bonds, oh. which is a special kind of bond. Oh, really? So, yeah, it's a kind of bond. So that's why uh, we're binding databases and blockchains or Web2 and Web3 ah. or centralized systems and decentralized systems. So that is the analogy. Uh, so Covalent originate from the chemistry. bond from chemistry. Yes. Oh, really? I didn't know that. So uh, it rains a lot in uh, Vancouver, which is where the team is based out of. And then one uh, weekend, a friend of mine said, hey, it's raining. Why don't we go check out this hackathon? And so I went to this hackathon and we built this uh, prototype. Basically, you can pull blockchain transactions into Excel. So you don't need to run nodes. You don't need to run uh, you know, any kind of infrastructure. And we ended up winning that hackathon. And that's when he said, hey, you know, getting regular people to read blockchain transactions is easily is a, is a very important problem to solve. And so that was the genesis story for Covalent. So it's quite an accident. I was not in Web2. I was not in Web3. I missed the whole ICO wave. I was not didn't do any ICOs. Uh, but that's Covalent in a, in a nutshell. So that was the uh, founding idea, the genesis story. And then we decided to start a company to commercialize this and then go to market and then build this out. Uh, and so on. So we start from a single idea to make it easy to understand, to use the data from blockchain data. Absolutely, wow. yeah. That's really great. And so the overlooked problem is that there's lots of blockchains out there that are yeah. scaling transaction writing. Like yeah. they talk about transactions per second, they talk mm -hmm. about fast finality, like mm -hmm. all kinds of features. But nobody is really talking about how fast and how easy you can you read back from the blockchain. Uh, so if you don't solve that corresponding problem, in my opinion, blockchains will not really reach mass adoption. That's true. So it needs to be counterbalanced. Too many, too much information. Not enough to yeah. read it out. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So, so inspired by solve the problem of blockchain data. Mm, so, so what is your core vision from after the establishing the Covalent? So I would say, you know, one of the biggest challenges, we're talking like vision, right? High level, right? Not, not like in the next two, three years, next 10 years, 20 years, 30 years. I think one of the key questions we have in society is, especially in the West, uh, access to what is the truth? is quite challenging. What is true is challenging. You don't know election numbers. You don't know COVID numbers. You don't know anything that's coming out. You know, they keep releasing these uh, unemployment numbers and then everyone thinks it's okay. But then six months after, they go and change those numbers. Yeah. So I think that's led to a, an erosion of trust in society. Uh, people are not trusting things. So I think blockchains have this solution 
with the immutable ledger and a timestamp and who put yeah. that data on there, yeah. which is solves a lot of these problems. So high level, that is my, my, my drive to get blockchain adoption because it solves a lot of the trust problems we have in, in society. And so uh, scaling back, if you look at all of the use cases like NFTs and property rights, uh, stable coins and payments, DeFi and access to these financial products, it all comes down to this foundation, which is a decentralized, uh, trustworthy, immutable ledger uh, that makes, makes uh, you know, uh, transactions cheaper and permissionless. So that is the, the essence. So feature of trustless of blockchain make people trust the data. Exactly. I think uh, it's like why trust people and governments trust math and cryptography. But that's true. Right? It's more transparency yeah. exactly. and everyone can explore the data from blockchain, right? 100%, yeah. But from now, the data is too much and it's not structured at all. That is why covalent is needed for society, right? Absolutely. <laughs> Okay, I see. So the next question. So how does Covalent address the long term data availability and verifiability problems in AI? Yeah, so this is a, a two part answer. Okay. And let's talk about long term data availability. Yeah, that's so going back to that vision statement, I talked about trust is at an all time low, which means you need access to transaction data to verify the truth. Yeah. But the problem right now is that if you look at a blockchain like Ethereum, Ethereum is being challenged between the Bitcoin vision of a store of value. So oh. this is where the ultrasound, uh, you know, EIP, like the okay. fee burn mechanism, all of oh, that yeah, was coming yeah, yeah. in. But at the same time, competing with Solana as a programming platform mm. for smart contracts. Yeah. So there are these like challenging visions. Mm. So it wants to be both, right? And it's it's like yeah. there's this uh, Confucius saying that if you follow two rabbits, you uh, have no rabbits. Yeah, that's true. So here, uh, you know, is it going to be like a store of value or is it going to be a, a, a developer platform? And what is happening is that if you look at the Solana route, they delete historical data. Oh, really? They, yeah. So it, the blockchains are, are like billboards. They're like, they're not databases. So you post some data onto the blockchain, wait for uh, the challenge window. Okay. And then after the challenge window, the data is deleted because you don't need it anymore. So someone st have to store the data. Exactly. Uh, and so if you look at all of the technological items that have been shipping on the roadmap, so let's take a roll-up. A roll-up can use, uh, before they could upgrade, you could put the transaction data on-chain. Mm -hmm. Or you can use uh, a DA layer like Celestia or Eigen DA or mm -hmm. Avail. Or you can use Blob uh, storage right now, right? Mm -hmm. So the on-chain transaction is very expensive. That's why gas was very, very expensive. Mm -hmm. The uh, alt DAs like Celestia, they delete the data after 18 days. After 18 the days. 18 days. Oh. So challenge window, you don't need the data anymore. If you put it on blobs, blobs are also deleted after 18 days. 18 days. 4,000 epochs. So blobs are deleted. They're not on the chain anymore. So there'll be state expiry at some point as well, like with the, with the purge. And so essentially what's happening is that all of these, to increase the throughput, increase the speed of these blockchains, you keep the data for the challenge window, which could be two weeks to 18 days. Mm -hmm. And then after the challenge window, you just delete the data. Don't care. Don't care. Done. Gone. So what that means is that access to historical data is very difficult to come by. Like, where do you get it? Now you have to go to another centralized provider and there'll be some probably some data dump somewhere. You don't know how it got there. You cannot replicate the blockchain. You cannot reproduce the blockchain. Nothing is verifiable. So big mess. Oh. So this is why we came out with this idea called long-term data availability as opposed to short-term data availability. Because in the short-term data availability, when you post your transaction data, you have to make this data available yeah. for what is known as a withholding attack. So mm -hmm. that's the, the challenge that they're solving. But then they, they delete the data after 18 days. Now, Covalent has a different security model okay. that ensures that the data is available forever. Oh. I didn't know that they removed the data. Yeah, it's data. overlooked, overlooked because that is the that's how you hit the performance. So all of the newer chains, like if you could look at Monad, if you look at like say, 
there is no archival historical like there's no node that keeps all this data because it's too much so without covalent the day the data passed over 18 days you cannot trust that data right? yeah where is it from oh. in fact you don't even have the data in many cases right yeah yeah oh so it's a it's, it's a, a big really problem interesting. yeah it's oh. a big problem I didn't know that i'm surprised oh you're gonna challenge <laughs> and let's move on to the next question. Oh, there's the verifiability problem in AI. Yeah. Yeah, this part two, right? So part two is the, the verifiability problem. So these AI models, right? A lot of people talk about the uh, training and the compute. Yeah. So you have like Akash and projects yeah, like that. Anymore, yeah. You have the inference model, which is uh, using the fine-tuned model to make inferences. Mm -hmm. But what a lot of people actually don't talk about is the data that feeds into these models. That's true. So Covalent has this big reservoir of structured data that is all verifiable. It's based on cryptography. And so you can use this to basically train verifiable models and do verifiable inference. And so even if you use this data to use like synthetic data, like all kinds of use cases, that whole data pipeline from the transaction data transaction is, data. Is, is, so. is, is like fully verifiable. Oh. So that is known as the verifiability problem in AI. So it's not to say that AI data is biased or not biased, right? Uh, because bias is really opinion, right? If people have an opinion, that's fine. Right? You know, you should have an opinion. Yeah. But you have to disclose that this has come from this data source, right? Mm -hmm. So in like the case of Facebook, there was this example where, uh, or, or Google, for example, into Gemini, you go and type, who is the first U.S. president of the uh, United States uh, of America? It showed like a black person, right? Which is obviously, <laughs> uh, obviously see. wrong, uh, right? Yeah. And that's because the uh, training data uh, yeah. for, you know, a variety of reasons was, uh, was messed around with yeah. so that it's not overly like, you know, biased or something. Yeah. But you don't, any, you don't have uh, any kind of accountability that, that data has been like... No one knows where it's from. Where it's from. Mm -hmm. So here you have the full data provenance. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, let, let's move on to the next question. Uh, let's, uh, Covalent has recently published in Vision 2025, right? Which includes the EWM Lite client. Uh, what are the key features and benefits of this initiative? So this whole long-term data availability uh, solution that we are building, we're calling it the Ethereum Wayback Machine, so EWM. Yeah. So this is similar to the uh, internet wayback machine. So you can go there and get any website as of any historical uh, point in time. So you could say, okay, go go show me Yahoo's website uh, like five years ago, and it tells you exactly that. So it has all the history of the entire internet. So that's uh, called the internet uh, wayback machine. So if e Ethereum wayback machine means it's similar, any you can transaction, find any transaction, any point from years the Genesis ago. block uh, from 10 years ago, anytime, right? So that is the Ethereum Wayback Machine. So one of the key problems we're looking to solve is that where uh, Ethereum is becoming essentially uh, to compete with Solana more like a data center chain, which means you need to have heavy duty hardware and dedicated uh, infrastructure to run the Ethereum nodes. And so we're coming up with an architecture where you can scale and verify these transactions uh, on your phone or on a laptop. Okay. So that's known as the light node. So that is a, one of the most exciting pieces of uh, technology that we're going to introduce. So a DevNet is running inside uh, with our internal team right now. So expect in the next couple of weeks uh, a public test net and, uh, and then we'll get to mainnet uh, later this year. Oh, so Ethereum Wayback Machine allows us to find out Again, so Ethereum Wayback Machine allows us to search uh, information about the uh, layers or something, layer two or layer three, like optimism. In the future, yeah. Today uh, it's only future. Ethereum mainnet, but Covalent itself supports 200 plus blockchains. So Optimism, Arbitrum, Polygon, uh, uh, ZK Sync, uh, Tyco, Scroll. So the entire e Ethereum ecosystem. So eventually all of that transaction data it doesn't matter if it goes to a DA layer like Celestia or it goes to the blob storage, it'll be stored in the Ethereum Wayback Machine. 
then that time you have to labor again like BWM blockchain wayback machine like no but in in a in a way like optimism and arbitrum is all ethereum right it's part of ethereum yeah uh, it's so, only EVM. yeah okay. it's only EVMs. I understand. yeah <coughs> so let's talk about the token C CXT could you share with us its distribution mechanism and uh, what incentives the users in the ecosystem so CXT stands for the covalent X token. It's a ERC20 token that's on Ethereum. And it's trading on a couple of major exchanges like OKX, Gate, KuCoin, mm. uh, Crypto.com, Kraken, uh, and so on. And uh, it is the governance and staking token uh, for the covalent network. So what you can do is you need uh, CXT to run an operator. Okay. So either uh, one of the roles, like a block specimen or so on, or the light client, right? You need to stake your CXT. Okay. Uh, you can use it for governance. So any okay. system parameter changes, you have to use CXT to vote for proposals. Mm. So that is another use case. And there's a key aspect here in terms of the value accrual mechanism. On the usage of this data, we have lots of clients, like enterprise customers and so oh, on. Okay. And they all pay revenue. So they pay revenue in stables, so in U.S. dollars. Oh. And that U.S. dollar, uh, there's a buyback mechanism where it buys CXC on the market and then distributes it to the operators who do the work. So you get the revenue in dollars and you buy back the CXT? On, on market, on like market, market buy, oh. on the smart contract. Oh, okay. And then it's distributed to the operators who do the work. Oh. So the operators, they earn in CXT. But the source of income or whatever revenue is exogenous, which is outside the blockchain. So the yield that these operators get is a mix of like inflation yield plus revenue yield. So well, that is quite interesting structure. Oh, thank you. And uh, what milestone has? Covalent already achieved, uh, and what are your major goals for this year and beyond? So there's uh, two aspects. One mm -hmm. is uh, just scaling the decentralization story. So the uh, light client is the next major EWM light client's next next major feature. Uh, the test net should be in the next couple of weeks, and then the main net uh, towards DevCon, mm -hmm. uh, which is in uh, November in uh, uh, in November. Bangkok. Okay. Uh, then we have the query nodes that you can run. Uh, then we have uh, liquid staking that's coming down the pipe. Uh, yeah, just more features. We have a whole DeFi ecosystem we are going to build. Uh, we're looking to expand majorly into the APAC region, just uh, hire an APAC lead. Uh, it's why I'm in, in Korea talking to uh, partners here. Uh, Block Media is an example okay. of that uh, partnership. Okay. Um, so yeah, it's just uh, just grow, grow, grow. So one of the things about Covalent is that we're core infrastructure, right? So it doesn't really, uh, like bull market, bear market doesn't really matter to us. Actually, it don't matter. Yeah, no. because the, the product and the usage, like data is like uh, all the time. Uh, you cannot tell your tax uh, authorities that, oh, it's a bear market, I cannot pay my tax. No, <laughs> it's not. So you yeah. need the, the product. So uh, the, the revenue on that side, the demand and the scaling, it's not really it's not connected to like crypto prices and so on so so that way you know we have to like a lot of the projects that we build is like like two to five years so we just have to like just build 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 that's really good for you because uh most of the project got affected by the market conditions yeah you know? yeah that's good. it's tough yeah <laughs> so uh this is our last question so lastly, is there anything you would like to say to Korean investors? Yeah, so I would say um, there's a couple of things that are happening in the, in the market today, right? Uh, the first thing I would be uh, uh, cautious about is these high FTV, low float uh, mm. tokens. Uh, I know I think investors are starting to understand that it's down only. Uh, it's only for the team's ego that they raise uh, a lot of capital and then go out at a multi-billion dollar valuation mm -hmm. with 15% float, for example, right? Okay. So as the supply keeps coming out, uh, it's yeah. down only. So 
I would say something like CXC that is uh, fully unlocked. It's like 85% unlocked. Okay. The remaining is only the ecosystem. There's no like VC is coming to dump on your head or anything. Uh, I would say that is like a very interesting market mechanism uh, where you should not look at the valuation and buy in. You have to look at the, you know, the, okay. the supply and tokenomics. Second thing I would look at is the fundamentals matter, right? So uh, there's a lot of projects that are just one cycle or in fact, you know, a couple of weeks and then they're done, right? Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes there's just no market. Sometimes it's a rug pull, whatever, right? But teams that are consistently building and shipping, if you look at the proof of proof of work, which okay. is, you know, are they shipping? Are they like, uh, being, they're working, they're working, right? Okay. <laughs> you know, back those projects, right? Mm -hmm. So I know uh, a couple of years ago, in, uh, we did a coinless sale. And I remember this distinctly. When we did a coinless sale, uh, we were pushed, our sale delayed by two weeks oh. uh, for two other projects, okay? Oh. Because those two projects were raising a lot more. They're raising like 40, 50 million dollars. We were raising a smaller amount. Mm. So coinless said, no, you're not that important. So we'll push you. What happened to those two projects? They're dead now. Oh, really? Yeah, they're not, they're not done anything. So, so it's pretty interesting to see that big hype, a lot of like, you know, raise, you know, flashy marketing doesn't mean a lot, right? You know, they're like, it's, it's not, not always a precursor to success. So I know it's counterintuitive, but uh, I hope, I hope the, not just like Korean investors, but generally, you know, uh, across the globe, uh, there's this, you know, you have to dig a little deeper. So have you heard everyone? I'm super bullish on covalent now from now on. <laughs> Thank you. Appreciate not financial advice, NFA, right? Yeah. 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 DYOR. Oh, yeah, of course, DYOR. And we are helping you to decide. And today we had a really, truly insightful conversation with Ganesh from covalent. Thank you for us. Thank you so much for joining us today. Amazing. Thank it you so really much. was really insightful. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Oh. All right. Good luck to everyone. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. We'll wrap up this interview from now. Thank you. Cheers. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>